everyone. I uh, just wanted to do a quick update here. Um, or maybe a bit longer update. So recently I've been encountering some issues with uh, SPS and LPS. Don't mind the noise in the background, that's just the dishwasher going. Um, anyways, yeah, I've been encountering some issues. So if I take a close look here at my cat's paw, you will see, hopefully, that uh, it is doing horribly. It has some algae growing on it. The polyps are, you can kind of see them, they're kind of glowing green there, but there's very few of them. The whole underside is gone. It's just a real mess. And if you're wondering about that frag next to it, it's not actually touching it. Those are just little colony of zoas I threw up there just this morning. Anyways, um, so yeah, it's doing horribly. Um, as you can see, my gold hammer, which looks green, I guess, without the filter, um, is very small. It's not doing excellent or anything. It used to be at least twice that size. Um, otherwise, you know, my zoas and stuff, I have a few. They're doing pretty good. You know, I'm uh, collecting more and more. Just a quick uh, zip around of my zoas here. And, uh, you know, they're, they're doing pretty good. I'm fragging some here and there and trying to sell a few to, uh, you know, recoup some money and whatever. Anyways, that's not really the point. Um, my Duncan's not doing too bad. Um, it has gotten a little smaller, but I've also moved it, so that might be the issue there. Um, my torch is doing pretty good, although it has been much bigger in the past. It's not doing too bad. Now, getting to the reason why this is all happening. Um, <clears throat> initially with this tank, I was doing a, a three and a half gallon water change. The tank's a 10 gallon tank. It has about nine gallons in it though. Um, so when I do a water change, it's, you know, it's pretty big. Uh, it was replenishing everything that needed to be replenished. And, uh, you know, keeping nitrates at bay and all that and doing quite good. Um, I was kind of told that, uh, you know, that all my corals would love alkalinity a little higher than it was. Because by the end of the week when I did a water change, it was down to 7 or... Maybe a little over seven, but pretty low. And my calcium was getting pretty low too. It was still in the range, but it was getting pretty low. Anyways, so I started do dosing alkalinity and um, that's when st things started to kind of go downhill. Um, at that point, my SPS, my cat's paw, was still doing okay. Um, there wasn't really any detrimental effects right away, but uh, eventually things started going downhill. I also eventually started dosing calcium. Now I think the calcium is what really did it. Um, you see, since it's a 10 gallon tank, I would shoot in, you know, four or five mils of alkalinity, which is what it needed to get bumped up daily. And I'd kind of just shoot that all at once into the overflow area so I'd have a little bit of time to mix. Um, but anybody with more experience than me would know that that is a big pH swing, that is a big everything swing. Um, and once I just started doing calcium, I dosed them back to back. So I dosed the alkalinity, and when I did dose the, the uh, calcium, which is like every third day or so, I would dose it right after the alkalinity. Um, as you can see, my SPS, my well, my cat's paw is kind of in the flow of the output. You know, the water runs down and then circles back around, so it was kind of hitting it directly. Um, so I'm quite sure that is the whole reason the uh, corals with skeletons have kind of really gone downhill. 
Um, so that's a little bit of background. Hopefully my video doesn't cut out here soon. But uh, anyways, I'm going to try to wrap this up. So yeah, everything's going downhill, yada yada yada, not very good. Um, so now what I, and then I tried to do a lower level of alkalinity because I was told, well maybe I used to keep it between 9 and 10 and so that was quite high and I was told maybe a little lower might be better, maybe it was too high so I tried lowering it. Um, anyway, so the point is with a very small tank if you're going to dose you definitely need a doser. Now I kinda made a DIY kinda doser, I mean it's not a great doser but I took a 5 mil syringe from one of these Salifert test kits and on there, if you can see, I just did a, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but one hand, um, it's just like a drip loop that you would use to acclimate fish and it's quite tight, I put a quite tight knot so you can see the drop there, it's going very slow and so I just put in two mils of alkalinity and then I put about four or five mils kind of diluted it with some just tank water in that syringe and so as you can see you know it's slowly going down so that will allow me to dose you know a couple mils at a time and two mils will take hopefully over an hour maybe two hours to actually dose it and so if you don't have a doser maybe that's an okay way to do it if you're not dosing a whole lot um, I'm gonna try that for a couple weeks and see how it goes uh, you know I work from home so it's not really a pain in the butt if you had a larger syringe I suppose you could like dose your full amount put all your stuff in there and add a bit of extra water just to dilute it so when it drips in it's not super toxic and uh, let it go. Um, anyways, that's maybe just a little quick idea for people if they're wondering about a doser or want to try that, that might be some kind of solution. Uh, the other day I got, or 